WCRF. Well, the Golden Globes were last night, and joining us now to analyze it from a faith perspective is our friend and regular contributor. He's an assistant professor of digital media at Cedarville University. Welcome back, Professor Sean O'Connor. Good morning. How are you guys? Doing better now that you're here, man. And oh, yeah. I, I have to ask you this. As I'm looking at I printed off the list of uh, nominees and winners for the Golden Globes, and I printed it because I'm an old man and I print things. Um, <laughs> What in the world is the movie The Banshees of Inishirin? In Inishirin. Yeah. Inishirin, that's right. So The Banshees of Inishirin is uh, one of my favorite movies of last year, actually. What? It's an Irish Irish dark comedy with Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson, actors you may have seen in Harry Potter and some other things. Um, about, you know, they, they were friends, and then one day Brendan Gleeson tells Colin Farrell he doesn't want to be friends anymore, and so it's them kind of their friendship breaking down and Colin Farrell's crisis of, like, what did I do wrong and what kind of a person am I and what does it mean to, you know, be a friend to somebody. And it's I, – I really enjoyed it. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, a, a, a dark comedy with some language and things like that. But, um, yeah, it, it got eight Golden Globe nominations and won, I think, three awards last night. And so, um, yeah, it's a big hit. Yeah, one of the awards was Best Motion motion Picture in the Musical or Comedy category. So it certainly did, performed very well. And it had tons, of, like you said, was it eight nominations? Right, which I don't know if that's a record, but it's very close to a record of nominations. Um, and it, out of all the movies that won last night, there's only one that I haven't seen. The rest that I, I was able to see last year. And um, we can talk about any one of them that you want. Well, so is it a Brian problem or a marketing problem <laughs> that I didn't know about the Banshees of Inishirin? You know, I think part of it is just the fact that because of the aftermath of COVID, movie studios and filmmakers are still f- trying to figure out what brings people back to movie theaters, uh, what brings mm-hmm. adult audiences back to movie theaters. Because, I mean, Banshees and other uh, like R-rated you know, uh, r- films for adults, not to say adult films, but you, you know what I mean, yes, films yes. for adults. They like that audience has been very weary of going back to the theater in the last couple of years. And it's only been a few films like Top Gun Maverick and some others that have really drawn them out. And so Banshees is one of those independent films that is in a few theaters for a couple of weeks. And if it doesn't make enough money, it goes away and goes to HBO Max. I think it's on HBO Max right now. Um, so there are options to see it. But, um, you know, some of these films, they, they slip under the radar of most like the vast majority of audiences. But like filmmakers and critics who actually vote for these awards, they recognize it. So now one more question on that particular film, since it had so many nominations and wins. What do you tell the, the, the Christian who's intrigued by it and likes great film? Should we see it? Should we not? What's caution? Things like that. Yeah, I think that's why, like, looking at a film's rating and the reasons for a, an R rating or a PG-13 rating, that's important. I think websites like Focus on the Family's Plugged In and other sites that break a film down, not just in terms of what the story is, but, like, what's the language content, what's violent content, sexual content, whatever that is. I think that's helpful because, I mean, Cedarville just started up classes yesterday again, and we were talking in some of my film and video classes about the fact that, you know, it, even as Christians making some of these movies, we don't want to be a stumbling block to people. And I also don't want to point people to a movie that I think is good, but it's got some objectionable content in it that would cause them to stumble. I mean, Paul talks about that, you know, avoiding that. And um, so it's it's not going to be, again, it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but I, I also want to be, like, if I'm recommending this film, I give the caveat of, yeah, it's got, you know, this bad language and there's some like violence images in it. And there's a scene of like non-sexual nudity for like 10 seconds. You know, I want to make that upfront very clear. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. And I, I think there needs to be discerning. So I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Mm-hmm. So now I'm going to make you Mr. Golden Globe so I can get upset with you. Okay. You got it. Yep. On, on behalf of Maverick and the descendants of Goose, <laughs> how dare yeah. you not give the best picture to Top Gun Maverick? I know. that There were a lot of people hoping for that, and I was actually not going to be surprised if that happened. And I think my theory as to why it didn't win, I mean, there's, there's probably a, a number of reasons. I think one of them is the fact that it's the Golden Globes, and if you've been following news about the Golden Globes the last couple of years, they've been, like, it's, it's an awards body that gives 
uh, awards to movies and TV shows, and they're voted on by a very small group of critics from different associations. And the last couple of years, they've been exposed for doing, you know, like having some suspect practices of, of uh, like bribery and stuff, how they campa- campaign, how movies oh. campaign for awards. Mm-hmm. And a couple of years ago, um, it got so bad that like people started like basically disowning the Golden Globes, and several people gave back some of their Golden Globe awards that they'd gotten for previous films. And one of those people was Tom Cruise. So I wonder if maybe there's oh. bad blood between him and the awards body. But I don't know. I still think Top Gun Maverick's great, and uh, my wife and I both love it. And I hope I hope that is a movie that I am positive uh, our audience or listeners today would be uh, really. They would enjoy seeing it. But see, I'm feeling more irrelevant now because I'm generally unfamiliar with the winner of Best Motion Picture, The Fablemans. Mm. What? Yeah. So The Fablemans is Steven Spielberg's latest film. He needs more awards, Golden Globes. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) exactly. More. Yeah, it's the the Fablemans. That's another movie that was it was in theaters for like a few weeks in November, and not enough people saw it, and it's it's mostly gone now. But if you can find it in the Cleveland area, it's probably in like one or two theaters still. But it's it's sort of a semi autobiographical film about his own childhood and upbringing and his parents' divorce and things like that. And I think even if you're not like a fan of Steven Spielberg, you're not familiar with him or his work or his story, you can still. Um, really enjoy it because it's a very entertaining film and it's very like dramatic in terms of how it portrays this family going through different moves across the country and the parents divorce and how does how does a kid learn to be an artist and a storyteller in the midst of all that so i'm not surprised that it won now my my next complaint to you mr golden globe uh would be how dare you not give the best director award to james cameron for avatar he he spent like 20 years making it (laughs) he did yeah yeah (laughs) That's another thing people were expecting because the the first Avatar movie won Best Picture and Director at the Golden Globes like 12 years ago or whenever that was, and uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'm not surprised that he was nominated. I, I don't know how many of you saw Avatar, how many of the listeners saw Avatar. I, saw I was it. kind of, I, I liked it. I was sort of, I saw it in 2D intentionally. I didn't really care to see it in 3D because mm. I didn't want my opinion to be swayed by the 3D about oh. the movie. And I don't know, it was fine. Um, I'm okay that it didn't win anything, but I know that like the vast majority of people are like, oh, the movies that made the most money or that are the most recognizable won nothing, and I'm not okay with that. And like, I get it, but I think you know, it's it has to do. Ideally, these awards go to the films with the quality and the acclaim, and there there are reasons why we recognize this as the best film of the year, best performance of the year, whatever that is. I'm overall okay with the winners overall. So, Professor Sean O'Connor with us again. I'm forcing him to speak on behalf of the Golden Globes, even though he has no authority to do so. Uh, I am actually going to give you give you props, as they say, uh, for finally giving Marvel something. Right. That's right. Yeah, Angela Bassett won Best Supporting Actress for Black Panther 2, which uh, I'm, I'm fine with for sure. She gave a good performance in that movie. I know that Marvel's last few films have been kind of underwhelming for me, including Black Panther 2. I think it's just the, the fact that Marvel is so constantly plugging this TV show and this scene and this other movie in this scene and the cameos and stuff. But overall, Black Panther 2 is a pretty good sequel, an emotional sequel to the first movie, having deal, having to deal with Chadwick Boseman's death and thus Black Panther's death. And she gives a great performance, and I'm glad she won. By the way, Mr. Golden Globe, my, my wife has texted me upset about the, the Avatar uh, faux, faux pas <laughs> from your Golden yeah. Globe's decision, so let that be a lesson to you. Right. Uh, she loves that well, movie. The Avatar, they we're going to get at least three more Avatar movies, so I'm sure there's more chances for James Cameron to win in the future. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> okay, so I, I'd love to hear your, your take on uh, one of the awards. Uh, it was for a big biopic, however you say it, biopic. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the, the best performance by an actor in a motion picture and drama was to Austin Butler in Elvis. What's your take right. on that film for Christians? Right. So I saw that back in, oh gosh, June, I think is when it came out. And I was really hoping that, that like the, the trailer for that movie implied that it was going to touch on Elvis 
Presley's upbringing in like gospel music and the charismatic church even and and uh, how that influenced the way he performed. It really doesn't do that as much as I would have hoped because I think that would have been a really interesting thing to explore. I personally thought the film was a little all over the place and I I I get it because you know it's a big movie about Elvis Presley so you have to you know pull all the stops and make it a really bombastic film but I don't know I didn't personally love it but I I do think it's worth watching for Austin Butler's performance as Elvis I think he he gets a lot of the, the voice and the mannerisms and and the personality pretty spot on and it's worth seeing just for that but it's not going to be you know very uh, I guess focused on the, you know his his religious upbringing or influence or even like the the conflict that he faced as a white performer uh, influenced by black music and how you know how do you reconcile that in the middle of like civil rights and things like that um, it could have gone deeper on a lot of things but. I don't know. I, I found it to be a little all over the place. Yeah, you know, I I was really impressed with his performance when I saw that that particular film. I agree with you that it, it was a well deserved award, but it really was kind of a. I, I finished the film. I was like, huh, that was mm-hmm. a little weird how they did that. Yeah. It was very artsy yeah. to me, like somebody ve- yeah. ve- very like, I, I don't know the right words, but it was very c- cinema weird to me. Yeah. If you've seen movies like Moulin Rouge 20 years ago or the Great Gatsby movie from 10 years ago, it's that same filmmaker. And I'm not surprised that it's so flashy because that's just that's kind of what he does. Um, But, yeah, I didn't I didn't love it, but I thought it was it was better than it could have been. But I also wanted a little bit more. That covers the most of my uh, issues with the Golden Globes. Do you have any (laughs) any final thoughts you want to give us on last night's results? Um, I mean, gosh, I, I think if you're if you're curious about these winners, I mean, several of them are on Netflix by now or HBO Max or Amazon Prime. Um, my favorite movie that won is called Tar. It won Best Actress for Kate Blanchett, who plays this uh, composer and conductor, who kind of her descent into uh, like uh, loss of power and, and control over her um, orchestra and things like that in her career. It's a very interesting character study that uh, in, the, in the age of what you could call cancel culture, it's become a very uh, talked about film. And uh, again, independent film that kind of was in theaters for a few weeks and then went away. But um, I still think it's a very engaging film, one of the best of the year. Well, there it is. Great analysis of the Golden Globes from last night by Professor Sean O'Connor, Assistant Professor of Digital Media at Cedarville University. Go to cedarville.edu for more information. Again, cedarville.edu. As always, thanks for your time and expertise, Professor. Thank you very much. Have a great day.